Here we go. Now. So if anybody's on on there waiting for this to come about, just um hopefully it's all working. I'm gonna jump on the group and make sure. Yes, we're live. Woohoo! <laughs> Hey everyone, so we might just wait for a couple of minutes so people can start to jump on or I know there's a few people what, going to watch this later. We have got a few um, questions to get through, but let me tell you about um, Barbara. So basically, we're jumping on today to the amazing Georgia and I know she's amazing because she's done my makeup, not today, but she's done my makeup once and <laughs> gorgeous then. <laughs> And looking forward to, um, I'm, I'm totally addicted to the eyeliner at the moment, just saying. But anyway, so, you know, like with makeup, we never really know, unless you go somewhere, you never really know what to do or, you know, how to find the colours that match. So so George is on today to tell us a bit about the um, seasonal colours. You're going to tell us um, how to colour match and a little bit about the Asada range. So welcome, Georgia. Hey, guys. Lovely to be here today. Lovely to be part of this live chat. Yay, I'm hoping that um, we don't get too much feedback because I can, it's a little bit echoey for me, but so if there's feedback, sorry guys, but you know, that happens. <laughs> Apologies in advance. Awesome. So should we just start, so Georgia, like, do you want to tell us a little bit about Isada and, and like why you love the products? What's so great about yeah. it? Yeah, of course. So Asada, for those who don't know, is a mineral-based cosmetics company. Uh, we've been around as a makeup range for nearly 15 years now. Uh, we've always been Brisbane-based and recently um, have received new ownership by the lovely Deb, uh, who's based down in Narang. So still Queensland, still southeast Queensland as well. Um, but what's so beautiful about our products is, like I said, they are all mineral-based and we take pride in what we don't put in our products. So none of our products contain things like talc, any additional binders or fillers or bulking agents. Uh, so all of our products are really beautiful to use on the skin um, and almost, and I guess prescribed, uh, especially in clinic scenarios as well. So for all you ladies who have treatments uh, done like needling, laser, microdermabrasion, and even more invasive treatments, our cosmetics and our makeup is actually safe to put on your skin immediately after following those treatments. And it will help to heal up, heal, speed up the healing process uh, and have you looking and feeling good a lot quicker as well. Uh, so yeah, like I said, it's a Queensland based and Australian owned company, but our products are sourced globally depending on where the best formulations and the best ingredients can be found. And I guess what, what I like, because I've been up to one of the studios in um, Brisbane and I had no idea that there was such a broad range of colours. And I guess what what we're going to cover today is because because colour is seasonal. Hey, like you, you, you don't really wear the makeup, the same makeup all year round, although I've been very guilty of that. No. <laughs> I either wear makeup or don't wear makeup. So um, I'm yeah. a little bit the same. I'm yeah. a little bit the same in a work situation, especially you'll see me with full coverage, bright lipstick, glitter most days. And then on my days off, not, not even mascara, um, I really go quite extreme between the two, but very much colours are um, a strong part of our collection and very much seasonal as well. So one thing that uh, over the years we've tried to stay true to is being a natural product in a mineral range, but still something that can be worn um, and seen on fashion runways, in editorial shoots, um, and will appear to a wider range of clients as well. So you've got we've got a big range of foundations and complexion products, but very much um, into the colour as well. With you know 20 glitters in the collection, a huge range of bright lipsticks, uh, and lots of versatile eyeshadows and cheek colours. Oh, you've cut out a little bit. Me? Oh, no, that's better. Sorry. No. <laughs> um, it's funny because Zoom has got a little bit of a lag with Facebook because we're doing it through Zoom. It's got a bit of a lag. So I'm watching to make sure it's all working all right on Facebook, but then I'm watching it on, on um, I'm listening to it on Zoom. So it's like our mouths are moving. <laughs> a delay. Like, oh, okay. Technology. So, so where do we start? Because I know that the hardest... Well, I think that the hardest part with um, makeup is actually finding the right 
colors for you and and yeah. I, guess I always get the opportunity or have the luxury of actually going somewhere but is there an easy like formula or how, how do you guys work it out yeah, so colour matching is really important um, with all foundations and all complexion products because it's really easy to, to get wrong. And if you do get it wrong, um, you're not going to feel as good and, and look as good as, as you should be. Uh, so when it comes to colour matching in our foundations, um, a lot of people do make a mistake when they're doing it themselves of colour matching on the back of their hand or on their wrist. That's a completely different color and a completely different type of skin to what's on your face. So when we're color matching for our face, we really uh, like to recommend using a minimum of three colors. And even if this is something you're doing yourself, if you don't have the option of visiting um, a salon setting, for example, if you can get your hands on some samples and do three stripes along the jawline, we want these stripes to be large enough that you can see it and starting probably about midway from the cheek, down the jaw and a little bit onto the neck. Take a step back from the mirror, get yourself in some natural lighting and then whichever color you can't see, nine times out of 10, that's the color that we that's best suited for you. Um, and I always like to say, if anything, err on the slightly lighter side for a liquid uh, foundation because then adding a powder, adding bronzers, cheap colours uh, that will warm up the complexion. Whereas if you go on this, on, go a little bit too dark, uh, you've then got the difficult task of trying to lighten it and make it blend more seamlessly. The last thing we want is that waterline along the jaw. So yeah. something that will blend really beautifully down the neck. Um, and knowing that, you know, the rest of our body might be a slightly slightly different colour. That's when bronzes and, yes. you know, cheap and, products. And I've done this myself. Yeah, like I've bought a foundation... And, sorry, I've done this myself. I bought a foundation, and then I've um, I've just worn that foundation, and then all of a sudden, um, it might be I might have bought it in winter, and then I go to put it on summer, and my <laughs> face looks white, and I'm like, what the hell's going on with this foundation? But you, you need yeah. to, it's it's color. It's related to the season. You know, you got to pick the right color for the right time of the year, or the way you definitely. Know, mm. Definitely. And if you, especially if you're the kind of person who is inside and outside a lot, of, um, particularly in summer, you know, we tend to spend more time outdoors in summer when it's sunny and people go away, they go to the beach. So in the makeup <laughs> world, we talk about having a foundation wardrobe. Uh, which Trish, I know is something I've spoken to you about uh, previously. So foundation wardrobe means that you do have that range of colours. So your winter tones and your summer tones and maybe your in-between colours. So especially if you do like to set tan a little bit, you might have your non-tanned colour, your full tanned colour, and yeah. then the op option of maybe mixing the two together or that in-between uh, for when your tan's wearing off. Yeah. Um, and that can include different textures and different finishes as well, depending on how our skin is feeling. We might want to go quite light and dewy if we're having a good skin day. Uh, we might like to go a little bit fuller coverage and more of a matte finish um, for events and things like that. So having a foundation wardrobe means that you should find yourself with a foundation for every occasion um, and not get too stuck with suddenly having something that's uh, maybe not looking quite as good as it did when you first purchased it. That's exactly what's been happening to me because because uh, I don't wear foundation much and then I pull it out and I put it on. It's like, oh my god, this looks ridiculous because obviously it's like a different color. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Just, <laughs> we've got a question um, which is related to that, so I might as well cover this one now. Um, if my skin got tanned, what colors can I use? I guess that's covered yeah, by so the wardrobe. That you're talking about hey yeah yeah definitely so that's a good question um and when when we do ask you know what colors can i use is that referring to foundation colors is it referring to eyeshadows and lip colors and things like that so when we do get tanned obviously going for a slightly darker foundation to to match your tan a little bit more um is the ideal and it's a great opportunity to really emphasize that beautiful tan skin by using bronzers something with a little bit of shimmer in it perhaps and really embracing your highlighting uh products as well so we can go along the cheekbone you know down the center of the nose under the brow and pick a highlighter that's in the slightly warmer 
tones as well. So not necessarily a yellow, but more those warm champagnes rather than anything too silvery that can look too white on the skin. Uh, yeah. So even something with a peachy undertone will be really quite flattering. Would that be on anybody or would that just be on, you know, would it depend what sort of skin you've got for that? Yeah, it definitely depends on what sort of skin you've yeah. got. But if, we, if it is someone who is, you know, getting more tanned or, or intentionally tanning their skin, uh, whether it be from sun baking, not that we yeah. encourage that, or fake tanning, um, yeah. then playing up that, that tan, it's generally more of a golden skin tone or more of that olive warm undertone. Um, yeah. Peaches and... and yeah, shimmery tones are always going to be really pretty. Yeah. So um, Nicole's asking the question, any contouring tips if I don't look I'm going like I'm going to war? <laughs> <laughs> God, I wish I knew how to cook. I'd be just like any contouring tips at all because I've seen some yeah. amazing stuff when you contour. It's like, whoa. Yeah, contouring. Oh, contouring is so important. Um, and particularly if, you know, we're trying to emphasise certain areas of our face and create shape that maybe isn't there or, um, you know, if we're going to the, the effort of getting face fillers and, um, you know, manipulating our, our face shape um, by emphasising that even more using contouring and highlighting will show off those areas. Um, yeah. So how to make it not look like wall paint? Uh, don't go, don't choose something too dark. Uh, contouring should be a good contour. Uh, you should select a colour that's maybe two, three shades darker than your base tone. So pick your foundation colour uh, using our colour matching tips, and then a contour colour should be maybe two to three shades darker. Um, and when we're applying it, blend, blend, blend is key. The last thing we want is really obvious stripes on the face. So we almost blend it so that you can't actually see it. It should just be a, a shadow or a suggestion of, is something there? Is that just her normal face shape? Uh, is she just blessed with, you know, beautiful cheekbones and bone structure? Um, so the quickest and easiest way to contour as well is what in the makeup world we like to say it's number three or an E shape down the side of the face. So a little bit along the, uh, the hairline, underneath the cheekbones. You can maybe see a little bit of mine today. So a little bit under the cheekbone and then down along the jawline. That's probably the quickest thing you can do to contour um, and just really blending it out nice and softly. We can then go to town like you've probably all seen and do the nose and contour the eyes and, and the jaw even more. Yes. Um, but they would be my tips. Yeah, right. So that's, that's a really good tip. So like from there to there, do I have a little contour there? Because the, You I, do have a little contour, yeah. <laughs> I've got, had some tips from someone really yeah. good. And then, and then <laughs> under here. Yeah, so along the, uh, along okay. the jawline. Just to okay. some more definition. Yeah. yeah, right. Okay, awesome. And tell us about the, um, like the season, the, actually, let me give you another question first. <laughs> Sorry, they've just they're on here so I just have to keep looking down so sorry about that no. um okay so what's the per oh we're going to talk about this anyway but what's the perfect colors for lips and blush for summer so is yeah. there a coming color yeah great question so like with all seasonal trends there are a couple of different options to choose from this this coming season. Um, for people who like more of a natural glam look, uh, some, you know, a nude is always in. Um, and this, um, this season we're looking at nudes that are in more of that slightly peachy apricot tone, um, as well as your soft pinks. And they can be colors that you can use on the eyes, lips and cheeks um, for a really pretty natural glam look, almost like a soft romantic. Uh, so when you're picking a nude, again, going for something that's two to three shades darker than your natural lip colour is going to be really flattering um, and help emphasise the, the lips. So those peaches and pinks and, and apricots will be really pretty this season. Uh, but on the flip side of that, uh, we're almost seeing a resurgence of that 80s glam. Uh, recently, we've had a bit of 90s coming through the makeup trends, but you're getting excited about that. 
Uh, but uh, eighties glam and bright gold colours um, is what we're going to be seeing a lot of. For example, the fuchsia that I've got on my lips today um, is one of the colours that we, I think, we're going to be seeing a lot more of. And that can be in a lipstick or a bright gloss or in the Asada range. We've got some beautiful crayons uh, mm. that encompass a whole a whole number of uh, bright gold colours. Yeah, from yeah. oranges through to corals through the through to pinks and purples. Yes. Yeah. I recently just bought the lip pencil to go with the lipstick yes. um, that I had. And honestly, it the lip pencil is, uh, the pencils are great. Like I'm loving the eyeliner and the lip pencil, mm -hmm. I love it because it's really soft. So being from the 80s, like for years and years and years, I was one of those that did the dark outline around the lips. And uh -huh. am I right in saying that I'm seeing that sneaking in? There is a little bit of that sneaking in. I don't know how how widely spread that's going to go. It's, it's, I mean, I like to pick and choose the trends that I personally follow and I'm not yeah. sure if I'm going to get on board with that one, but it will certainly emphasize the lip shape um, and make the lip look bigger. And that's something that we have always seen as well is that slightly, it's kind of almost a take on the ombre lip. So the slightly darker outer and you can overline the, the lip as well. Um, and then filling in with a slightly lighter shade will make your lips look bigger too. Yeah, yeah. Which I, I is always, that. well, for most people, that's a good thing. Yeah, well, I, I know when it was around, I had it for years and years, and I remember my daughter saying to me, you need to stop doing that, you know, and I just thought, <laughs> like, not that long ago, because I, I like it, if you like it, you like it. Yeah, yeah. So let me ask you another question before we go into the seasonal colours. Um, since most of us are working from home, what is the best mm -hmm. look for a Zoom meeting? And this has actually come from one of my staff members, that one there, because I know that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've all gotten used to the, the screen time this year and, and plenty of Zoom meetings to be had. You know, we're doing one ourselves today. Um, so the key with how to look good on, on camera is even though you might think, oh, it's just work or, you know, it's just it's Zoom, it's nothing to, it's not necessarily a professional setting, you are still on camera and you're going to look. So you've got to remember those photographic tips, the lighting tips. Um, and how you're coming across. So yeah. de definition is key. Um, most of the time we're only seeing the face or from the shoulders up. Uh, so we really want our features to be at the forefront. So even if you just put mascara on, um, a little bit of eyeliner would be great, but even if it's just mascara to bring out the eyes, grooming the brows, so filling them in slightly, definitely combing them. Uh, if you've got time, a little bit of, contouring and highlighting just to give yourself some more definition and look less flat um, and then go for a bright lip color go for something bold on the lips uh, you're going to be talking a lot um, so that's always a good way of you know bringing your bringing interest to your face as well you know it's true because sometimes I, I've seen people jump on a zoom and all they've got is their lips and a dark mm -hmm. eyebrow and you look like you've got makeup on yeah, exactly. Mm. Well, because you can put so many other filters on nowadays, depending on the apps that you're using. Well, um, so Zoom <laughs> needs a bunch of filters. Actually, you know what? Yeah, Zoom needs filters. <laughs> Zoom needs filters. I know. I've got my little ring light here to try and get the best, the best glow. Me too. Uh, I know. Yeah. I know. Um, let me ask you another one of these questions. Um, what is the perfect colour for lips and blush for summer? But I guess you're going to talk about summer colours now anyway, aren't you? Or, or you've yeah. Started. Yeah, we sort of touched on that a little bit with our seasonal colours. So those peaches and pinks and apricots. I mean, in the Asada collection, we've got a new product called our Blush and Glow. Um, and this is a really easy one-step product as well because you've got pretty much your seasonal colours in here. Um, we've got some pinks. We've got that apricot. We've got some beautiful shimmers. And that can be used on the eyes and cheeks. Trish, I used this one on you the other day. I know. Um, and I used pretty much the whole palette in the I know. Uh, that's so what I love. So it's a one-stop product. Yeah. That's what I love because you can just actually seriously have that one box and you've got everything <laughs> that you need. Because like you've I, got everything that you need. We did eyeshadow. We did well, eyeshadow. Blush. We did blush. We did our highlighting with it. Yep. And then we just picked a nice... We actually went for a really bright lipstick on you as well. So we chose a nice bright lip colour that was complementary to those tones. Um, so very much, yeah, those pinks and peaches and apricots. 
And you can go a little bit bold with it or keep it soft. Yeah. Well. And I, I came in and bought a, um, a pencil and a lipstick. I didn't buy the bright one because, like, it's a bit much for me. It was very bright. It was very yeah. bright. And not that I wouldn't wear it, but, um, but it, you know, what I had on. But um, I bought one that I wear and I've been wearing it, like, because I usually, I'm one of those people that just has one lipstick and I wear that, you know, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't match or anything. Yeah. And um, I've had so many compliments about it. I think because the way it sits on your, I don't know, I just, I really am addicted to the pencil and the lipsticks. Like, yeah. I'm talking lip, so that, lip, lip pencil. The eyeliner pencils. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so that lipstick was one of our mineral cream lipsticks, which is really beautiful. It's, um, it wears like a matte lipstick, but it's got a bit of a shine to it and a really creamy feel. Yeah. Uh, so it's nice and nourishing on the lip. It's very long lasting and oh, the toys are very big. I had to take it well. off. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I had to take it off. Yeah. It off. I had to actually take it off. So it was yeah. just stayed on. It was amazing. Yeah. And the lip liner would have helped with that as well. Yeah. So tell us what the, what the, um, like what should we be buying in our palette for, you know, like for, for the upcoming summer? Because I'm guessing, I think that we're going more towards a, you know, like a natural like the you know the dark brows the lips and just like a little bit of art like nothing too bold i'm thinking i don't know I, I think there's a slight change towards less is more definitely and i think because people are investing more in their skin um and kind of i guess their appearance without makeup so we're moving to that natural glam that almost no makeup makeup look uh, where our skin can really shine and be the focus. So some of the key products in the Asada collection that we'd recommend from a cosmetics point of view would be things like our Mineral CC8 Cream, which is a real sheer tinted uh, foundation. Uh, so it's a beautiful serum. It's like a tinted sunscreen, but it's got coverage. Um, and it just, it's, it wears beautifully on the skin. It's that nice natural coverage, uh, a little bit dewy, like I said, but our skin still... Like you can still see your skin coming through without it looking too made up and too done. Um, a beautiful mineral powder as well, something that's a little bit luminous that you can wear on its own or for extra coverage over a liquid um, is what we'd be recommending. It's got some beautiful luminous particles in it. So again, going for that natural glow. Um, but if you really didn't want to wear foundation, another beautiful product in this outer range, just use me one moment. Mm -hmm. Good. Is this one our Universal Glow? Which Trish, I'm not sure if you've seen this one yet. It's a cream. It's a cream highlighter, luminous product that we can wear neat on the skin or mixed in with a moisturizer or primer, and it will just really make your skin look the best it possibly can without makeup. Yeah, and I guess what I love about the Asada Cosmetics is the fact that you're wearing makeup that's actually healthy for your skin, like doing your skin. Yes. Can you briefly touch on that? Yeah, so I think I, I mentioned earlier that none of our products contain talc or any binders or fillers, nothing that's going to clog the pores. They're all non comedogenic and dermatologically tested as well. Um, so some of the beautiful ingredients that we do use in across the board in our products are things like your vitamins A, C and E. We do have some key minerals in there, such as uh, magnesium and potassium. Um, Jojoba is a beautiful hydrating product that we use. Um, and then touching on more of the skincare ingredients as well, hyaluronic acid features quite a lot in the Asada collection, both in our foundations as well as our lip products. Uh, lysine as well, um, which is one of those uh, more bio, um, what's the word, um, more of a synthetic ingredient. Um, and then other beautiful botanicals, so your rosemary, your jasmine, thyme. Magnolia bark, avocado, some beautiful butters as well feature in the collection. So sounds it is really, yeah, it sounds like you want to eat it, right? Um, so they are really nourishing on the skin and the minerals themselves will help to heal, protect and strengthen yeah. uh, the skin barrier. Yeah. It's almost so, better to wear a side of makeup than to not wear makeup at all. Yeah. So Crystal's asked a couple of questions. Um, they, they're kind of a little bit similar, but the first one is what colours to be used for natural makeup look? And the other question is, how can I achieve a no makeup makeup look? Which I guess is the same sort of question. So, same sort of question, yeah. So, when we're going for a natural look, um, think of those earthy tones. 
Uh, so think of some soft browns, some tops, some sort of um, creamy shades. You can still incorporate a little bit of a shimmer, uh, particularly on the eyes. Um, just not going for anything too, I guess, unnaturally coloured. Um, you can still incorporate a little bit of a peach and going for a less is more in terms of uh, the actual products. So not layering too many things on the face. So it could be that CC8 that I showed you. Um, paired with a beautiful cream blush. So something that's going to look a little bit more natural um, and like it's coming from within the skin rather than just sitting on the surface. Yeah. Uh, what was the, was that? Oh, it's the same question. Yeah. What colours do you yes. use in makeup and, and how can I have a no makeup makeup look? No makeup look. So yeah, it's all about grooming as well. So uh, grooming the brows and whether you put a little bit of a powder through them or just comb them. Uh, definitely mascara still um, and yeah. still defining the lip a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's really important. Yeah, that's true. I guess it's just um, like you may, although with the mineral foundation, sometimes you can just like brush that all over and that gives you a nice little, like little color. It does. It yeah. does. It does. So you don't, you, for a no makeup look, I'd go for a light coverage foundation. Um, if you are a liquid person, the CC8 is great. If you're more of a powder than our luminous uh, loose powder, you can pair the two together. Um, even a rice powder, which is translucent over the top of a liquid, will just help to, to map things down a little bit and keep everything in place without adding too much coverage and making you look too dark. Yeah, awesome. So what do you reckon? I've got, the, I've got this other little question on here. Sorry, I'll just grab that. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh yeah. So what do you, I know we're talking about trends, but what do you reckon, like, cause we're like a season behind, I guess, than overseas and with mm -hmm. COVID and all that, like there was probably no makeup trend for the last, you know, six There's no months, trend. Right? The, the, the trend, the trends were, um, yeah, take a break from makeup, I think, or use the, use the opportunity to experiment and practice things that you've been wanting to, to learn for a little while. Yeah. I think I wore makeup more though, because I was on Zoom. So I just like, you know. All the time, like, yeah. Yeah, just a bit of lippy, bit of, you know, mascara. Bit yeah, of a bit of concealer if you need it. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So what do you reckon's coming into, like, like, just say, for example, if you wanted a nice, um, a Christmas look, like let's say we're coming into Christmas, there's a few Christmas parties happening and, um you know, like I'm guessing I'm probably going to be getting my red lipstick out <laughs> for Christmas. Um, but yeah, any kind of look idea that you can give us as something simple that we could do like for Christmas or for the, you know, for, for our Christmas parties and stuff like that? Yeah, for the party, for the party season, for the silly yeah. season that we call it. So yeah. a bold lip colour is, is timeless and that classic red, you know, will take you from season. It never goes out of out of fashion, uh, so a classic red, and everybody can wear red, whether it's blue based or orange based, you've just got to find the right one. Um, but a nice bold lip, so again, coming back to those 80s brights, such as the fuchsia, the hot pink, the oranges. Um, but on the eyes as well, we are seeing a little bit of a resurgence of the smoky eye, but for summer um, and for our Australian season, it's not necessarily that harsh black or even that really dark chocolatey brown. Think softer colours, even more jewel tone shades. Um, and Asana's actually just launched a new pencil out, Infinite Matte Eyeliners, which make it really quick and easy to achieve that um, beautiful soft smoke. You're just using a pencil. Uh, so we've got a purple, a dark green, even a grey, uh, rather than those blacks and harsh browns. Um, and if you're not quite confident pulling off the smoky, which not everybody needs to or, or wants to, um, just a traditional coal liner. So a black liner, um, either just on the top, like you've got Trish with that classic wing, um, or even a little bit underneath the eye as well, um, is a really quick and easy way to embrace the, the makeup trends for the party season. Mm -hmm. And then I love this one as well. Think, keep this maybe for new year. Uh, but glitter eyes, um, yes. is, yes. is definitely yes. happening. So glitter somewhere on the eye. Tell us about Some your glitters. fluttery lashes. Yes, because tell us about your glitters because you guys have got like squillion glitters. Yeah, I'll just, I'll see if I can hold these up without them falling everywhere. All right. But we have, can we see those? Yeah. 
20 colors in our glitter collection. I did put a little bit on myself today in a gold and a silver, um, but I'll wear all of these somewhere on the eyes. So just a little flash of sparkle on the inner corner or just slightly under the lower lash line. Um, and if you really want to go to town, put it all over the lid. Our glitters are really beautiful because they are mineral still, so and they don't have jagged edges. They're really soft. They're ophthalmologically tested, so safe for contact lens wearers or people with sensitive eyes. Uh, and you can also press it into your lip color, sprinkle it through your hair, press it into your nails. So they're really quite versatile. And with 20 colors, um, I'm pretty sure we've got something for everybody. Yeah, right? from your, your golds and silvers and blacks through to, I'm not sure if you saw, there's like some blues and yeah. some really bright purpley pinks and green. And you know what? You can see with that that the 80s are coming back, hey? Even yeah. With, um, oh, God, what was someone wearing the other day? I think it was just one of those sort of shirty tops, and I was like, 80s. 80s, yeah. yeah. That sort of box-shaped T-shirt. Yeah. yeah, awesome. And now I think there is there is another question that we haven't actually answered. Just give me one second. Oh, I've got a round face. What colour can I use for contouring? Yeah, so we sort of touched on that earlier with our contouring and, and defining the face. So pick a contour colour that's two to three shades darker. If you've got a round face, uh, a round shaped face, um, then choosing where you contour and how strong you contour is going to be important. The, we talk about, you know, the ideal face shape is being that oval. Um, so for a round shape, it would be about bringing in the sides of the face a little bit and definitely giving a little bit more definition along the jaw. So concentrating your contour, particularly in this, um, on the sides of the face uh, and a little bit under that cheek uh, to give you some more sculpted cheekbones and more definition there. And then along the, the jawline, but not necessarily under the chin, you've already got that roundness. So contouring to give more of a, I guess more of a chiseled look or more, more of that shape um, and a bit softer along the hairline. So that number three, but concentrate it to you know, this section here. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. And those two to three shades darker. And then um, definitely putting a highlight next to that. So everywhere we contour, we then, we then want to put a highlight next to it just to really emphasize our work. Yeah, awesome. And just... Just before we finish off, because that was the, actually the last question. Oh, hang on, let me just check if there are any more questions online before we do. But um, do you want to tell us a little bit about where people can get Asada from? Because I think once you find out about it, it becomes quite addictive. Uh, definitely. <laughs> I, since I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> and I lived two hours away. That was, what, two weeks ago? <laughs> no, I think it was more than that. Yeah, it was like, it's bit, yeah, time's flying. It's, I know. it's December next week, which I know. Me. Um, yeah, so where can you get it? So, Asada, we are uh, still considered a little bit boutique. So, we are sold in, uh, we're not in department stores or pharmacies, but you can find us in skin clinics, day spas, hair salons, your local beauty therapist, Australia yeah. wide. Um, we do have two Asada studios uh, located here in Brisbane. Um, which are the which do have the entire range, uh, but if you aren't local to one of those stockers, then we do have an online store available as well. Mm -hmm. um, but our website does have a, a comprehensive list of stockers, so you'd be able to search who your local uh, person is um, to be able to go in and, and try some product fun. We do really recommend if you can get into a salon or clinic. Um, obviously keeping in mind uh, the various COVID uh, restrictions in your area. But if you can get into one of those locations, sitting down and actually trying on the product um, is the best thing that you could do. Yeah. And, and I guess it's always really good because everyone that, that stocks the range is trained in it as well. So it's always good to go in and try it on against your skin and, and buy what you right. the right one. Correct. And the way that we train our stockists in the makeup is like you'd be trained in skincare. So we um, we really listen to the clients and almost prescribe products to them based on their concerns, based on their needs. So what a you know a mum, a stay at home mum is looking for in their makeup range is not necessarily what. Um, 
the working woman is looking for in theirs, which might be different again to someone who is attending a lot of events and networking uh, as well as across the ages. So it depends on your skin type. It just depends on how much time and effort you're willing to put in in the morning. Um, and it depends on your requirements, um, you know, in, in your work and, and personal life. That's so true. Now I'm going to take a little, before we finish up, I'm going to take a little photo of us doing our little live. <laughs> Well, I've got to say thanks so much for all of that info, Georgia. That's been really yeah, helpful. I'm already thinking, like, which one am I going to buy next? I think I'm probably going to have to come and get that. Um, I think I, I don't know whether to get the bright orange or the bright pink next because I definitely want something bright. I've got a red, but I think I want one of those yeah. green fluorescent kind of colours. Yeah, and every and I will just say that every woman should have a bright colour in their lipstick wardrobe. So you should have a nude and you should have a bright. And whether that bright is a pink, an orange or a red, go all out and them? get one because all of them, yeah. Um, but go out and get a bright and a nude and you'll be set. I think so, especially while we've been locked up for so long. Like, and I like to wear a lot of black. So sometimes if you wear a lot of black, it's nice to just have that pop, you know? Yeah, exactly. And then you can tone down the eyes or really play them up as well. Or the attitude. Tone down the attitude and brighten up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Georgia. That's been so helpful. Oh, my pleasure, Trish. Um, awesome. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun this morning. Awesome. This and afternoon, yeah. Yeah, pleasure. So if you guys have got any questions that we haven't actually answered today, just flip them through and I'll send them through to Georgia and um, and um, Trish will answer them for us. And, yeah, you can find the SADA, find a stockers, check out the website, whatever you want. And if you want anything about it, I know a lot about it now. I'm learning as I go. So I could end up being a makeup artist. You never know. <laughs> yeah, you could. And then you can answer these questions. Exactly. All right. Well, thanks, Pete, Georgia. We'll see you later. Thanks, Trish. Bye, guys. Bye.